Hey guys, I received this 20 inch CRT television for my birthday, and in this video I want to explain how to remove useful components from such a TV. Let's get started. Before we begin, I'd like to say that I see these devices as a symbol of the progress of humanity, what we are capable of as a species. I find it incredible that in just about 10 years, we went from a CRT 2 feet wide to computer screens a quarter inch thick. With that said, let's begin. The first thing we need to do is completely disregard all safety instructions on the television's plastic casing and remove all of the screws. Once we have done that, we must remove the plastic cover in order to see all the electronics inside of the television. The first thing we notice is that the circuit board is covered in dust, but I suppose that is to be expected since the television is over 20 years old. Anyway, here we can see the cathode ray tube, video amplifier, deflection yoke, signal demodulator, audio amplifier, and finally the flyback transformer. I'll talk a bit more on how these devices work later in the video. Anyway, now that we are inside of the television, we must discharge the internal capacitor of both the CRT and flyback transformer. To do this, we must, we must connect a preferably a flathead screwdriver to this wire that goes all around the CRT and then push it under the anodal cap. If you hear a click when you do this, it means that you have correctly discharged both internal capacitors. If you do not, however, and you are completely sure that you have made contact with these metal prongs, it means that the tube and flyback were never charged in the first place, so I suppose that that is even better. It could also mean that either the CRT or flyback transformer had an internal bleed resistor and the device just charged on its own. This, however, is only a feature of very modern televisions, and you're better safe than sorry, so I recommend attempting to discharge it anyway. Once we have done that, we can begin to remove components. I'll start by taking out the cathode ray tube itself to prevent damaging it, and we'll subsequently remove the deflection yoke. Sorry guys, it turns out I don't have the proper wrench to take out the cathode ray tube and the deflection yoke is somehow glued to it, so I guess those are going to stay as they are. Anyway, next I'll take out the circuit board with the, with, which contains the flyback transformer as well as some capacitors, voltage regulators, transistors, including this giant metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, resistors, the microcontroller and small signal processor, and finally a ton of diodes, some zeners but mainly ultra fast recovery rectifiers. I'll try to avoid cutting wires because, well, that's, that's a bad pa practice. Finally, I'll remove these two speakers.
Once we have removed everything from the television, we must begin the highly tedious job of desoldering all components from this circuit board and putting them into a bag of some sort. I'll start with the flyback transformer. These are all the components I obtained from the television. Here we have several capacitors, resistors, diodes, and some inductors, as well as a relay. Our horizontal output transistors, horizontal deflection output circuit, some transformers, and obviously our, our high voltage flyback transformer, to which, as you can see, I've already attached the resonant capacitor and a piece of high voltage wire on the other end of the secondary coil. Now, how these televisions work. On the surface, it is very simple. A flyback transformer powers an electron gun, which is essentially a cathode heated by a filament behind an anode with a small hole in it. When a very high voltage of 25 to 35,000 volts DC is applied between these two electrodes and the cathode is heated, a cathode ray is created, which is essentially the flow of electrons in a vacuum. Most of these electrons crash into the metallic anode and are returned to the power supply. However, the electrons which are perfectly centered in the anode's hole and experience equal pull from all directions form a culminated beam. This requires focusing electrons to create a very sharp beam less than a tenth of a millimeter thick. This beam eventually hits the phosphorescent screen that glows when electrons collide with it. This creates a point on the screen. The intensity of this point is altered using a control grid. Finally, in order to control the position in which the beam hits, deflection coils are used. Although this sounds quite simple, the amount of precision needed to create a complex image on a CRT is incredible. In the future I will make an in-depth video explaining everything from the construction to the operation of these devices. But that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching.